everybody. We're here with another chapter of my Bible reading program. This I'm going to be reading chapter 4, and in this episode, I will be addressing an issue, a question that somebody brought up to me the, uh, earlier today, and I told him that I would answer this question, and how fortunate that this question came on today, which it did, because it has directly relates to this chapter which I'm fixing to read, specifically about Cain and his wife. A lot of people have had contention over that, and I will talk about it a little bit after I read this and everything. Chapter 4. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord rejected Abel and his, respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and it is a desire for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood calls out to me from the ground, so now you are cursed from the earth. Which has opened up its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth, and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken upon him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone find him should kill him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bore Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad, and Irad begot Mahuthil, and Mahujil begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Lamech. Then Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Adon, and the name of the second was Zillah. And Adon begot, I mean, an Adel bore Jabel. He was the father of those who dwelt in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who played the harp and flute. And as for Silas, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Naaman. Then Lamech said to his wife, Adon and Zelah, hear my voice. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech. For I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Now Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For God had appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and his name and named him Enosh. These men began to call on the name of the Lord. 
Now, okay, here we have, let's go over a little bit of what's in the chapter here. Now we have here the first murder where Cain murdered his brother Abel. Let's talk a little bit about what led up to that murder. Now we see in the first two verses, you know, we, Adam and Eve have the sons Cain and Abel. Now Cain was a tiller of the ground and Abel was a herder. He had animals. Now it starts with the contention here starts with the offerings that they had both given to the Lord. It says, you know, Abel brought, in verse 4, Abel also brought forth, I mean in verse 3, in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel in his offering, but he did not respect Cain in his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Now let's talk a little bit here about the two offerings that they give. They both offered stuff to the Lord. So why did God like one offering and not like another? Let's first go to Cain's offering. He brought the fruit of the ground. Now as you know, fruit doesn't grow on ground, but it falls down to the ground. So basically, Cain just, you know, picked what f just fell on the ground, fell off the tree, saved the good stuff for himself. Now, his brother Abel, he brought the firstborn of his flock. He brought forth the best of what he had, the fatted calf. He offered to the Lord the best of what he had, instead of Cable who kept, I mean his brother, who kept the best for himself. So here we have an example. What it is, is the devotion of their offering to the Lord. What it meant to them. What they felt in their heart. Cain couldn't understand that. He saw that his offering should have been just as good as his brother. And that's where jealousy comes in. Another sin that can eat away at our heart. So the Lord comes and talks to Cain. And says, why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door. So in seven, you know, verse 7 here, you know, the Lord is saying that if you do well, you will be rewarded. But if you let sin into your heart, you will be punished. Sin will follow sin. Now Cain, I mean, God told him this, told him to be careful, to watch what is, was in his heart. But Cain wasn't listening to any of this. He was still angry. He was angry with his brother. And in verse 8, you know, Cain gets his brother aside and he kills him. You know, murders him in cold blood. And then, you know, in verse 9, the Lord comes to Cain and says, Where is Abel your, Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? So here, you know, we, you know, Cain is lying to God. You know, thinking he can get away with it. Am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he is. Now, basic. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now, have we here, you know, we have shows here that you cannot lie to God and get away with it. You will get punished. So don't lie to God. Be true to God and be true to yourself and be true to others. This is, so now you are cursed from the earth. Oh, let's see. So now you are cursed from the earth. 
which has opened its mouth to receive the blood of your brother from your hand. <clears throat> when you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. So after this punishment, you will see in these next few verses, Cain really changes his opinion. And he's begging God that the punishment you have given me is too harsh. People are going to kill me. They're going to be out to get me. It goes from arrogance to paranoia here. Sin leads to misery. Or perceived misery. Surely you have driven me out from this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth and it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. So the Lord has a little bit of compassion in verse 15. And the Lord said to him, Therefore whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone find him and should kill him. And in verse 16 through 22, it talks about the genealogy of Cain. Now this brings up an important thing which I will be talking about in a minute, which is trips people up. Verse 17 here, and Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and born Enoch. Now people say, you know, how can Cain had a wife? Because there was only Adam and Eve and the children that they had, which Adam was one. So some, think, you know, some have come up with you know, various possibilities that God had angels come down and you know, be their wives or that they took brothers and sisters and had an incestual relationship. Or another possibility you know, is it does not actually say in here, but you can reference from other, thing, other places in the Bible. I think the most likely is that God created for them. He could have just as easily created them because he's the God of everything. The God of the universe, he created everything. Now a couple verses I want to go here. One that disproves the angel and man theory. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, And there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the Son of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord God saw that the wickedness of men was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. So here we have in this verse what happens, you know, when angels, the sons of God, have relationships, you know, with mankind. Only wickedness can come through, and that's, you know, producing half angel children, which some refer to as Nephilim. It was a dilution of the human race, a changing of what God had planned. And this is leading up into the flood. So, we can rule that out because God wouldn't set up one thing here and then change it later. And now let's go to Leviticus. You know, verse 18 about the... You know, some say that you know, they, they had relationships with their brothers or sisters that can't... You know, that Adam and Eve had a lot of children and they had daughters. Now let's go with, you know, chapter 18, verse 6. None of you shall approach anyone who is near of kin to him to uncover his nakedness. I am the Lord. 
So basically, God is commanding here no incest. So he was not going to have incest. So if you eliminate those two processes, the only one that makes sense is that God created, you know, man created a, a wife for Adam. I mean, created a wife for Cain just as he did for Adam. And another verse to back this up, if we go to Matthew, head over to Matthew here, sorry for having to flip all through these pages, and we go to chapter 3, you know, we have John the Baptist you know, prepare, when he's preparing the way, he says in ver, verse chapter, in chapter 3, verse 9, And do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. So here we have John the Baptist, you know, actually physically saying to the people, and preparing the way, that God can make people out of stones. And earlier, he made people out of dust. So it's not very hard to believe. The only logical choice here in this one is that God created, you know, partners, you know, created a, ch a wife for, for Cain so that the lineage could continue. And okay, well, let's get back. You know, we've addressed that. And I want to continue on to Lamech. Now, Lamech here is an interesting character. Very simple. Then Lamech, in verse 19, you know, back in Genesis 4, now Lamech took for himself two wives. The name of one was Adad, and the name of the second was Zelon. Now it says earlier, you know, that man and wife should join together. Not man and wife and wife, but that's a downfall that many people have taken, but this is not very around that much anymore. And now let's skip down to verse 23. And Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my word. Wives of Lamech, listen to my speech. For I have killed a man for wounding me, even a young man for hurting me. If Cain should be avenged sevenfold, then Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Now here we have, you know, a man who disobeys the commandments of God on so many accounts has two wives is also a murderer killed him kill a young man for hurting him so his temper as a real you know impetuous temper is the best I can get from this and and here in verse 24, if Cain shall have been 70-fold, then Lamech 77-fold. So he's saying, well, if God can give this protection to Cain, then he shall protect me much, much more. I see the difference is, you know, Cain, his protection, his vengeance protection was given to him by God. No, Lamech. Lamech says, you know, I'm going to give this protection to myself. God will protect me. But not only does he give this protection on himself in his arrogance, he magnifies it many times because in his own heart he sees him as so powerful and important 
but it's 70 times 7. And in verse 25 and 26, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son, and named him Seth. For God had appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, who Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. These men began to call on the name of the God, the name of the Lord. Now, okay, we have starting here. And we had the genealogy of Cain and the genealogy of Seth. Now, one thing it mentions about the genealogy of Cain is a lot of the people were famous in their times. And you know, Seth, they you know, called upon the name of the Lord. You know, they were God-fearing people. The people of Cain, not so much. They had the power and the glory at that time. And well, I hope that this clears up some questions that you may have. And if anybody says, well, what about Cain and his wife? Well, you have an answer that you can read, you know, Genesis 6, verse 4, Leviticus 18, verse 6, and Matthew 3, verse 9. I'm here to clear up any problems that believers may have and problems that unbelievers may have. If you have any concerns or dilemmas, please post them in the comments and I will do what I can to, to get them. And one prayer that I have is that my message will be able to reach out to as many people as I can so I want to spread the word. If you think that you know somebody that can benefit from what I'm saying, show them the videos. Let them see it. That's all I ask. And thank you and amen.